in a mesmerizing tale of reincarnation, Rishé, a soul embarking on her seventh life, faces a captivating twist of fate. To live the carefree life she has always wanted, she discovers that her path to bliss intertwines with an unexpected partner, the very same handsome prince who murdered her in her sixth life. Four. In the opening scene of the film, we are introduced to Arnold Hine, a tall and menacing figure, making his way towards a castle with sinister intentions. Passing by, palace guards discuss how young princes are confined inside due to their age. Arnold penetrates the castle walls, eliminating all knights. The final knight, displaying determined courage, confronts Arnold, only to be struck in the chest. Later, we discover the last knight is a female named Rish, reincarnated five times. Rish wakes in a chapel where the crown prince accuses her of tyranny, nullifying their engagement. Rishé goes on to explain how surprised she was when she was reborn in a chapel for the first time. She had gone back home to meet her parents, but they had disowned her. Rishé had wandered around the city because she had nowhere to go. She eventually stopped by a footpath where she bent down in tears. Just then, a strange man stepped in front of her and introduced himself as Tully, a merchant. He asked why she was wandering about alone. After taking one glance at her clothes, he realized that she was a noble and was about to question her further when she suddenly asked if he would like to purchase her engagement ring. Tully asked Rish if she would like to follow him and his company on their boat, and Rish had instantly agreed. Rish eventually became a student of Tully's before becoming a world-class merchant who had traveled to almost all countries around the world. However, a war took place, and Rish had died soon after. In Rish's second life, to the surprise of everyone gathered at the chapel, she had thanked the crown prince after he broke off their engagement. Afterwards, Rish had headed straight for home, where she took all her possessions, including money and jewelry, in preparation for her journey with Tully. But unfortunately for her, Tully had already left by the time she arrived at the footpath. Rishi had eventually become a doctor who made medicinal herbs and traveled all over the world to treat humanity. However, like her first rebirth, she had died in a war. In Rish's fourth life, she had trained under the familiar face of Dr. Michelle Evans, an associate from her previous life. But a war broke out and she died. Risha had taken up the role of a maid in her fifth life, but had ended up being killed in a war that had taken place. In Risha's sixth life, she had disguised as a man and fought as a knight before being killed by Arnold Hine. We're taken back to the present where Rish had just reincarnated in the chapel. As always, the prince attempts to make her a laughingstock by laughing at her despair, but Risha simply interrupts him and tells him that she didn't regret it. Risha hurriedly walks out of the castle and mumbles to herself about how she was happy that the engagement was over and she was free to do as she pleased. Just then, Risha bumped into a tall figure and was stunned to be staring at the face of Arnold Hine, who happened to be her killer in her past life. He asks why she was strolling around the castle majestically, but she simply informs him that she had just broken off her engagement. She asks Arnold to stay side because she has somewhere to be. Prince Arnold watches her in amusement as she walks over to the balcony and jumps over the railing, before asking his assistant to ready his horse. Rishi reaches the palace gates and is surprised to see an inspection going on. The crown prince discovers Resh at the gate and walks over to her before loudly declaring that she was so devastated by the annulment of their engagement that she had wandered around all day. But Risha publicly disgraces him by telling him that she was thankful for the annulment of their engagement. The prince falls in shock at this, and the crowd laughs at him. Just then, a lady named Marie rushes out and supports him, and the crown prince accuses Risha of being a villain who constantly maltreated Marie. Rishé realizes that the real reason why the crown prince had called off their engagement is because Marie had badmouthed her to the crown prince, but she takes no offense. Rishé tells the crown prince that she'll never see him again and walks off, but a shrouded figure steps in front of her. Rishé pulls out his sword and attacks him, but the hooded figure matches her strike with his sword's sheath. Rishé is stunned to realize that it's Arnold, the crown prince of Galkine. Suddenly, Arnold goes down on one knee and asks Risha to marry him. The crown prince is stunned at this and asks why the same prince who single-handedly killed a legion of soldiers is showing remote interest in Rish. Risha, taken aback by Arnold's unexpected proposal, initially declines it. The situation takes a surprising turn when the crown prince's father intervenes, apologizing on behalf of his son and revealing Arnold's royal lineage as the heir of Galkine. Despite this revelation, Arnold assures the king that their trading relationship won't be affected, 
but requests a private moment with Rish. Granted a private room, Rish and Crown Prince Arnold engage in a discussion. She questions his motives for wanting to marry her, only to discover that he has fallen in love with her. As Rish reflects on her past lives, she realizes that Arnold was responsible for her deaths. Despite this revelation, she decides to marry him to prevent further wars and ensure a longer life in her seventh incarnation. However, Risha sets forth conditions for the marriage. She requests a separate apartment, a space for receiving guests, and insists on Arnold not laying a hand on her. Surprisingly, Arnold agrees, and they return to Galkine. During the journey, Risha fends off Arnold's attempt to retrieve his sword-turned pillow, reminding him of their agreement. Upon their arrival, they encounter bandits, and Arnold manages to disarm them without causing harm. Unfortunately, Arnold's men are injured, prompting Risha to create an antidote for their poisoned wounds. The men reluctantly accept the antidote, after Risha demonstrates its efficacy by healing herself. As they explore Galkine, Risha is captivated by its beauty and recalls her travels to other countries. Prince Arnold reveals her accommodation in the guesthouse due to her request to live separately from the Emperor. However, the neglected state of the guesthouse prompts Rish to clean it herself. Witnessing a maid named Elsie being bullied, Risha intervenes and offers to help her with chores. Elsie inquires about Rish's identity, but Rish deflects the question. That evening, Prince Arnold secretly observes Risha from a distance, questioning how she sensed his presence despite his efforts to mask it. Rishi explains her awareness, and as they converse on the balcony, she expresses her determination to shape her destiny. Prince Arnold admires her uniqueness and pledges support for her endeavors. Overwhelmed by his declarations, Rish fails to notice Arnold's breach of their agreement by touching her face. As he walks away, he reminds her to think of something else she desires, since he had just breached their agreement by touching her face. The following day, Rishi is awakened by a knock on her door, and to her surprise, it's Oliver, Prince Arnold's aide. As they catch up, Oliver reveals the exhaustive workload they've been handling since their last trip out of the city. He confesses to having had more rest than the crown prince, who hasn't slept a wink. During their conversation, Oliver can't help but notice Risha, who playfully raises her arms, but he quickly apologizes. He mentions how the crown prince seems happier since their engagement, a stark contrast to his usual demeanor. In a timely revelation, Oliver shares a list of guests invited to their upcoming engagement party, scheduled for the evening. Rishi, later visiting Arnold, requests a favor, reminding him of their breached agreement. Arnold agrees to her wish to choose a personal maid, and discloses that the upcoming party was initially intended as a bride selection event. At the party, Arnold surprises everyone by introducing Rishi as his future wife, bypassing the expected bride selection. Amidst the noble's daughters vying for his attention, Arnold and Risha showcase a dazzling dance, leaving the crowd in awe. Later, Risha, intrigued by the crown prince's swordsmanship, asks him to teach her. During the dance, she recognizes his movements from a past life and challenges him, only for him to effortlessly take control. The applause from the crowd follows their spectacular performance. Despite some ladies trying to play a trick on Risha with a spiked drink, she handles it calmly. On the balcony, she sips chili wine and Arnold arrives, expressing his displeasure at the trick played on her. As they talk, Risha notices a scar on Arnold's neck, a revelation that surprises him. The next day, Rish takes an unexpected turn, assisting Elsie and other maids with their duties. Diane, one of the bullies from the previous day, dismisses them, claiming they won't be chosen as the crown princess's maids. Risha, however, surprises everyone by addressing them as the crown princess and appointing Elsie and the new maids as her attendants. Diane is taken aback when Risha asks her to help with teaching the maids to read and write. Later, Oliver reports the events to the Crown Prince, who finds amusement in Risha's ability to stir things up. Later on, Risha asks Elsie to help her style her hair differently because she plans on meeting someone important. The distinguished guest turns out to be Chief Tully from Risha's past life, associated with the Arya Trading Company. Risha envisions partnering with Chief Tully to prevent Arnold from initiating a war that claimed her life. However, she masks her true intentions by expressing interest in procuring wedding wares from him. Chief Tully, suspecting ulterior motives, declines her request but reveals his plan to stay in Galkine for a few days. Disheartened, Risha retreats to her garden, lamenting her missed opportunity to befriend Tully. Realizing Chief Tully's subtle hint about his extended stay, 
Rishé dyes her hair and seeks him out in a cavern that night. After out drinking his men, she discloses her intention to become business partners, aiming for future profits. Initially resistant, Chief Tully succumbs to Rish's persuasive use of his favorite business strategy, setting a seven-day deadline. Returning to the castle, Rishi encounters the Crown Prince, who questions her whereabouts. Reluctant at first, she eventually reveals her meeting with Chief Tully after his persistent inquiries. Arnold warns her to avoid his younger brother Theodore, as he is a miscreant. The next day, Rish is surprised by Theodore's striking resemblance to Arnold in her garden. He introduces himself as second in line to the throne, offering protection from his brother. Rejecting the offer, Risha discovers Theodore's intention to cross paths more often. Inquiring about the brother's relationship, Risha learns about an argument between Arnold and his advisor regarding prioritizing commoners' security over noblemen's. Arnold devises a solution pleasing both factions. Reflecting in her room, Risha realizes the difference between the Arnold she imagined from her past life and the current version. Finding a letter at her doorstep, she discovers it's from Crown Prince Arnold, inviting her to a secret meeting at the chapel by midnight. The anime ends here. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and like if you want me to make a part two.